Hi. We're going to be going over some physics fundamentals, the basics, if you will. Now, I don't mean basic as in easy. I mean basic as in base. Everything else sort of builds from this. So I thought it'd be fun just to first start with this one. Look at this physics and it's spelled wrong. <laughs> like F equals math times a whole lot of tears. So thanks to Lois at my school for that one. Okay, let's get started. So for units we're going to be using, we're going to be using SI units, which stands for Système International. It just means like the official physics units, okay? So we mean kilograms. We don't mean pounds. We mean meters, not inches. We mean seconds and so on. Now, I just wanted to point out something important uh, for a proper form. What do we mean by this? Is that if we're going to say, for example, um, I'm going to write this down. So not, for example, meters per second if we're doing a speed or a velocity. I mean, for example, we're going to write it as meters seconds to the minus one, like this. And we're not going to say, for example, um, meters per second squared, like this. We're actually going to say, no, in fact, we're going to say meters seconds to the minus two, because these exponents, that's what they mean. So just keep that in mind. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do this. We're instead going to do this and this. Those are the units we're going to be using. Let's talk about scalars versus vectors. So what's a scalar? It's a quantity that just has a magnitude, just a, a length or just a, a value. So for example, there's a bunch of them. I mean, one of the simplest ones is time, for example. So t is time, and that's measured in seconds. Now by contrast, a vector is something that has direction and magnitude. So what do I mean by that? Well, it's got the same thing as the scalar did, except direction is important. So for example, uh, we would say like something east or north or whatever, or a direction. Let's keep going with the scalar one. So m is going to be mass. That's measured in kilograms. We've got, for example, distance. We'll, we'll write that as s for the distance. And we're going to measure that in meters. And we've also got speed, which we're going to write as v, which is measured in meters per second. But remember, we write it as meters seconds to the minus 1. All right, now for the vectors. Vectors are things, like I said, has a, uh, like, it's, I think of vectors as arrows, for example. So an arrow, there's a length to it, that's the magnitude, just like the scalar had, except the direction is there. So let's think about these ones. We've got F, which is going to be the force measured in newtons, um, or kilogram meters per second squared, but we prefer newtons. Uh, B, for example, is magnetic field strength. We're going to be working with those eventually. That's in Teslas. We've got, for example, S is displacement, which is measured in meters. And you might think, wait a second, distance and displacement kind of look the same. So it is V for velocity in meters per second. And we've also got A for acceleration, which, by the way, is in meters per second squared. Now for vectors, what we often do is we write them with a little vector symbol on top. We write them like a little arrow, for example. That implies that it's a vector. Now, in the IB exams, you don't have to do this at all, but I'm just letting you know that this is a, a, a typical sort of notation that we're going to be using. So let's talk about distance versus displacement. Distance, remember, was the letter S here. That was S is the distance, and displacement is S with a vector. Now, uh, and remember, that's measured in meters. This is also in meters. So what's the difference between them? Well, distance is just how far you travel. So if I walk one meter, that's my distance traveled. What about a displacement? Well, a displacement is how far you are from your start point. And sometimes they can be different. Sometimes they're the same. If I just walk one meter to the east, well, my distance and displacement are the same. But look at this example here. So we have a duck. Uh, okay, so it's going to walk one meter east. So let me maybe do some little arrows maybe for myself here. So I'm going to say, okay, so let's say, so the duck here starts here, and it goes one meter to east, to the east. That's to the right. Uh, so I'll draw it like this, and it's exactly one meter long. Of course it's not, but as long as I'm consistent with my arrows, it'll be fine. So one meter east, sure. Then it goes one meter south. All right. So that means it doesn't start from here. It starts now from here. So now it goes one meter south. All right, so that's one meter there. And then it goes one meter west. All right, that's a one meter. And then it goes two meters north. So to draw that, I'm going to go, well, one meter north is that, and another meter north must be that. So let's consider then what happened here. So this right here is the start. I mean, that's the key part here. And this right here is the finish. That's where it ended. Now we can consider the distance and the displacement. So let's see what we have going on here. So the question then is, what is the duct distance traveled? Well, it's really easy. It's just 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2. All right, so what does that give me? Well, that gives me 5 meters. So what do I say then? I like to actually put the answer finally. So I say, oh, because it's a distance, I'm going to write just s with no uh, vector symbol. And it's just going to be 5 meters. All right, that was pretty easy.
Great. Now what? Well, I also want to do it for uh, the displacement. So how do I do that? Well, I have to consider where you started and where you finished. And notice you started here and you finished one meter to the north. So I'm going to say that. I'm going to say the displacement then is going to be equal to one meter. And I'm going to even define a direction, maybe in square brackets like that, and say one meter north. So this way it's at least really, really clear what I've done here. All right, great. So let's consider now average versus instantaneous. So we're going to talk, for example, about velocity, but we can also do speed for average speed, and we can also do on the next ones do uh, instantaneous. So here's an exam tip. They don't tell you the equation for speed. So you kind of have to know it. And the way I remember it is I just think about like a speed sign, something that looks like this, like speed limit, 10 kilometers per hour. Now what does that tell me? It tells me it's 10 kilometers per hour. And kilometer is a distance, so this reminds me then, this is the key now, so I'm going to write this down, so I'm going to say that means v then is going to be then kilometers, well that's a distance, over hours, well that's time. So this right here is what I memorize, or you know, I hope you can at least come up with this yourself somehow, but I just think about the speed sign here. So let's look at these equations here. We have average velocity, which is total change in displacement over total change in time. We have average speed, which is just the, the scalar version, right? Which is total distance traveled over time. These are not given on your formula booklet, so that means you should memorize these. You should have some way of getting to these, okay? Now, that's why I put this in here. My girlfriend said she needs some time and distance. Is she calculating velocity? That's why I put that right, because time, distance, ha, ha, ha. All right, so let's look at this one here now. We've got what is the average speed then when traveling from 0 to A? So we have a start here, and we end up going to A. Now, this is the displacement, or sorry, distance. This is distance versus time here. And so if I want the average speed, what do I do? Well, the average speed is just going to be the total distance traveled over the total change in time. All right, so let me write that down then. So that means average. Maybe I'll, I'll write it like this. I'll put a V maybe with a little AVG. So V average is going to be, well, just the total distance traveled. In this case, we're here to go from here to here. Let's see. Well, I've gone total distance traveled is just 2. Do you see that? So that means it's going to be just 2 meters over uh, total time, which is also 2. So in this case, it's going to be 2 over 2, which is 1. So that means my average speed then will just be 1, uh, and I could say, what are the units? The units are, let's see, it's these over these, right? So meters per second. So that's why it's meters. And remember, I write it with a second to the minus 1 like this. All right, so that's my average speed. That's good. Now what about this exam tip? Watch out for units on graph. So often when they give you a graph, there's something weird about the units. They might say like, oh, this is times 10 to the minus 6, or this is micro or something. A common one they'll say is time is in ms. You think, oh yeah, meter seconds, no problem, right? Time's not measured in meter seconds. So what do you do? This, for example, would be milliseconds, and milli is 10 to the minus 3 seconds. So watch out for things like this. Here's the good news, pro tip. You can look this up in your data booklet because they have, uh, in the very front, there's actually a big list of all the different prefixes and what they are. So that's actually pretty handy. You don't have to memorize that one. So how do I do the instantaneous velocity? Well, that's the velocity at a specific time. So what I mean by that, it'll be V, either speed or velocity, depending on if it's vector or not, but it's going to be just be delta S over delta T. That is the key here. And again, do they give you this one here on your formula booklet or your data booklet? They do not. So this one here, you should memorize as well. But again, I think it should be mostly okay because it's kind of like what we wrote before. It's distance over time. That's why I put this near speed in 1994 incorrectly credits this director. Speed did not have a director because if its speed had any direction, it would have been called velocity. <laughs> yes, I love it. So here's a question. What's the instantaneous speed at A? We have this graph here, and this is the distance versus time. And it goes like this, a parabola. So how do I actually find this? Well, what I need to do is uh, find this. Now, what is the meaning of this thing right here? The key thing is this is the gradient. That's what this actually means. This is the gradient. So if I'm looking for the instantaneous speed, it's the gradient. I need the gradient at A. And A is it's doing some funny stuff there. Right? The, the gradient is going to be something like this, some sort of graph like this. Okay. So I'm going to need to draw myself a straight line that passes through this that matches the graph. 
Okay, so let me try to draw that. So it goes, I don't know, it's going something like, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to draw here, but something like that, isn't it, around here? Something like that. And if I look at this one here, well, then I'm going to do, like, you know, the uh, how high does it go and how far over does it go. And so I'm going to write that down. So that means then my instantaneous speed then. So speed, and I'll maybe put, like, in INST for instantaneous, just for me. And that's going to be equal to, let's see, it's going to be the total distance traveled here. So in other words, 4 minus 0. I'll just maybe even write it down to like a 4 minus 0. That's my change in distance over the change in time, which is 2 minus 0. All right, so that's just going to be 4 over 2, and 4 over 2 is just 2. So that means then my instantaneous speed then is just going to be 2 meters per second. Is it a vector? Nope, so I don't need to say what direction it is, which is good. So I'll see, we don't need to worry about this speed business. All right, well, how about average versus instantaneous acceleration? Similar to what we did with speed. Okay, well, the average acceleration must just be, well, the total change in velocity over total change in time. That's for the average. If you want the instantaneous acceleration, well, it's just going to be, uh, in this case here, just change in velocity over change in time. So it's just going to be this, again, just like this gradient that we did before. Here. Okay, so this one right here. That's going to be important here. You should find some way to memorize this or to be able to know this. So those, they're not on your data booklet, so you'll have to be able to come up with them yourself.